Hey guys, what's up? It's Charlie here and today we're going to be looking at the 10 worst doctors of all time. So this video is in collaboration with Wacky Wednesday and I definitely recommend you watch their video on the 10 creepiest vintage medical practices after this video. I'll include a link to their video at the end, so definitely check it out. Drop a like if you enjoy, let's aim for 4,000 likes on this video because it really does help me out. So coming in at number 10 we have Michael Swango. So this guy was a doctor from New York and he did so much messed up stuff to his patients. And what this guy did was shocking anyway but it's even crazier because of how many people he did it to. He killed 60 patients using poison and he would do that by putting it in their medicine. And he didn't kill them for any particular reason just because he was a bit insane. <laughs> He was actually caught because of a really weird reason, it wasn't any detective or police shit, someone just found a scrapbook he made about the murders with newspaper clippings, notes and photos in it. So yeah, this guy actually took pride in killing those people which to me is really creepy. And he didn't just kill patients, he also beat a colleague to death. Anyway, after he was caught he only confessed to 4 murders, but luckily that didn't work out too well and he got life in jail. And he's in jail right now but he does have a chance for parole in 4 years. So yeah, in 4 years watch out and make sure this guy isn't your doctor. Anyway, if that didn't creep you out enough, before he was even caught, he was nicknamed Dr. Death because it was known that his patients would always die out of nowhere. I thought he had to be smart to be a doctor, I don't know why his colleagues didn't pick up on this one. But anyway, this guy really was a wolf in sheep's clothing. So coming up next is Cecil B. Jacobson. So what this guy did is really bad but not as severe as some of the others on this list, like murderers or whatever. But what Cecil did was more straight up disgusting. So this guy was a fertility doctor and he used his own sperm to impregnate his patients without telling them. And that's not the only crime he committed, he also did a lot of money fraud and that earned him hundreds of thousands of dollars. As if doctors weren't already paid quite a bit. Anyway, he was found out after patients who got pregnant out of nowhere tipped off a local TV station. They then did a story on him and publicly pressured him to do a DNA test. And after that they found out he was the father to 75 kids where the mums had no clue who the dad was. That's really fucked up because he's not just messing up the mum's life by having an unwanted kid, but also messing up a kid's life before they're even born. And he was found to be guilty of 52 counts of fraud which earned him a ton of money so yeah this guy is an all-round douche and for doing all that stuff he only got five years in jail and a hundred thousand dollar fine and what's crazy is that even though this guy did all of that bad stuff he won a Nobel Prize in 1992 then again Hitler did win a Nobel Prize in 1938 so you can't really trust those guys and I saved the craziest fact about this guy for last it was found out that he'd impregnated a baboon that the hospital was doing tests on that's beyond crazy at that point you're literally a baboon rapist pissed. It just has such an unfortunate ring to it. Anyway, coming up next is Harold Shipman. So if you guys thought that Michael Swango's killings of 60 people was bad, yeah, this guy would probably laugh at that number. He killed an insane 250 patients over the course of just 17 years. This doctor is from England, like me, and he's one of the most famous serial killers in British history. He was caught by a detective after people noticed that pretty much all of this guy's patients ended up dying, and that a lot of those patients were elderly women, which was Harold's main target. But the detective never imagine they would uncover something as massive as this. Harold was eventually caught and he had a court date set but they really should have locked him up in that time because he strangled four more people at their homes before the trial. And in the trial it was found out that Harold had done some really disgusting things when he was a doctor. For example he faked wills of dying patients to leave money to him and he made almost one million dollars off this. And in one case he faked the will of an elderly woman that he killed and wrote off all of her family members and just put himself on it. And that alone earned him over six hundred thousand dollars. After he was found out, he got life in prison with no chance of parole or anything, and then to top it off he killed himself so he didn't have to face any prison time at all. And he did it before they could take their money from him and he gave it all to his wife. And because they're not allowed to take the money back if it had been inherited by someone because it was against the law, he basically used a loophole to make sure the victim's families never got the money they were supposed to. Wow, even after death he still managed to find a way to ruin those families' lives. So coming up next is Conrad Murray. Now this doctor is very famous and I bet most of you guys will have heard of him or seen him before. This is the guy that was found guilty of Michael Jackson's death. He gave Michael Jackson 25 milligrams of propofol on the night that Michael Jackson died. He also treated Michael with other drugs that wouldn't harm him, but he said that even though he knew it wouldn't be good for him, Michael insisted on having the propofol. I mean, I know he's famous and he was asking for it, but I mean shit, if you know it's not going to be good for him, then what kind of doctor are you to just give people exactly what they want? Hey, uh, can I get a little bit of a uh, morphine? Well, I don't know. I'm not really supposed to. Hey, man, do you know who I am? I'm Charlie. I am top tens and I want that morphine. Okay.
That's how I assume it went down. But seriously, this doctor was charged with manslaughter, which is where you didn't mean to kill the person, but you did. And he was sentenced to the maximum jail time for manslaughter, which was four years, but he ended up only serving two of those years. And he also got his medical license revoked. It was suspected that Conrad gave Michael the medicine because he didn't want to get fired as Michael Jackson's doctor because he was earning $150,000 a year from it. That is a lot of money, but as a doctor, you should never put anyone's life at risk. So next up is Walter Freeman. So you guys have probably heard what this guy did before, but you may not know who he is. If you're confused by that, don't worry, I'm going to explain. So during World War II, there was a lot of soldiers who developed mental illnesses. So Dr. Walter Freeman came up with a solution that is now known as a lobotomy. This is still done today, but the way he did it didn't work and it was really messed up. This guy would push an ice pick into the socket of the patients, which would destroy a bit of their brain. And because they couldn't talk or move, he thought that worked and he'd neutralized the illness. Now I don't see how being paralyzed completely is worse than having a mental illness, but okay. But yeah, obviously this was so painful and basically left anyone in a vegetated state. And he didn't just do this to a few test subjects, he did this to over 2,000 veterans who had mental issues after World War II. So yeah, sorry if that really creeps you guys out. I mean, I'm getting a headache just thinking about someone pushing an ice pick into my brain. But coming up next is H.H. Holmes. Now this is a really creepy and strange one, but the story is also really interesting and it legitimately sounds like something out of a movie. So this doctor was a major serial killer and he killed people in a way that you guys might not even believe. He lived in Illinois in Chicago in America and he was pretty rich so he decided to buy this massive hotel in a town called Inglewood and this hotel would later be known as the Murder Castle and that's because he rebuilt the inside with loads of doors that opened onto brick walls, random rooms with nothing inside them at all, weird hallways, stairs leading to nowhere, doors which could only be opened from the outside and a ton of other confusing things to trap people in the hotel. Then he charged people to stay in it like it was a regular hotel hotel, and then when they were trapped inside, he would kill them. Holmes also hired staff to work at the place who he also killed, and he even profited from the insurance money and their wills. He would mainly target young women, and he killed over 200 people, and he was actually caught after trying to get $10,000 from an insurance company by faking his own death. But that backfired when he was caught and investigated, and they found out about all of the other shit he'd done, including the murder castle. And ironically, he got the death penalty, only this time he definitely didn't get $10,000 from it. So coming up next is Jack Kevokian. So this doctor was a euthanasia enthusiast, which meant he thought if someone wanted to die, then he would just do it for them. And what's even weirder is that he videotaped himself killing a few of these people. Once, he filmed himself giving a guy a lethal injection, and then he even showed it live on a CBS News interview. And he was arrested about 19 times for doing this, and it wasn't just people who were in pain medically, some of the people were suicidal or mentally ill, and he just killed them because they asked for it. Which is really stupid, because he could have just got the people mental help or something. Anyway, Anyway, he was sentenced to 8 years in prison for doing this and then he died when he was 84. And if that didn't creep you out enough, he was also really into art, but not the kind of art you and me might like. He did drawings with his own blood, and he usually did it of really disgusting things like dead kids and other really nasty stuff. So yeah, in short, this guy was obsessed with death, which is never a good thing if you're a doctor. So next up is Fritz Haber. So this guy's a little bit different to all of the other doctors on this list, but what he did was just as bad, if not worse. He developed, he developed chemical weapons for Germany in World War two, so yeah, he basically introduced poison gas into modern warfare. And believe it or not, this guy also has a Nobel Prize. Uh, hi, uh, I killed five people and then I set a school on fire. Holy shit, someone get this man a prize! But seriously, this guy weaponized chlorine and other gases, and this is really inhumane even back then. And this guy actually gave Saddam Hussein the inspiration for what he did, which was to kill thousands of people with chemical gases. And what's really bad about killing people with chlorine gas or another gas is that it's a really slow and painful death. So if you already thought that war was pretty shit, well, this guy just made it quite a bit worse. And even though it's illegal and inhumane, some armies still use his techniques today. And even now, he's nicknamed the father of chemical war. Yeah, not exactly the best nickname to have. So next up is Francis Willis. This guy's another doctor who was really bad towards the mentally ill. He was a famous doctor because he treated King George when he went insane. But he wasn't properly trained to treat the mentally ill, but he did it anyway and he did a really bad job of it. He had a technique called blistering which involved the patients doing manual labor all day every day, and if they didn't do exactly what he said, he would be aggressive to them and make them wear a straitjacket at all times. And this caused people to go even more crazy because they were basically prisoners there. I mean shit, that's almost worse than prison, at least in prison you're not in a straitjacket. Oh, 
no, never mind. Asylums are better. Anyway, he also operated on people's brains with no training or experience or anything at all. And he did really bad experiment and he did really bad experiments on these people, which is obviously really messed up, and he ended up accidentally killing a few of these people. So yeah, if you guys have ever heard of any of those scary insane asylum movies, this guy is kind of responsible for that. And coming up last is Joseph Mengele. So this guy was a famous Nazi doctor back in World War II, so you already know this guy's gonna be bad. Unless you guys are Nazis, so to any of my Nazi viewers, uh, fuck you. No, but seriously, this guy did a ton of awful things during World War II. And it's not just what he did, but who he did it to. He did a lot of experiments on Jewish kids and other prisoners of Auschwitz. He horrifically tortured a lot of kids to death and called it an experiment just so he didn't have to take responsibility for it. He did a lot of experiments with twins and he even tried to make a few conjoined twins. So this guy basically did the human centipede in real life. And obviously he was a Nazi at Auschwitz concentration camp anyway. And if you guys didn't know, that's where they literally gassed millions of Jews to death. And after World War II, he drowned a man to death in Brazil because of racial issues he had. What's really bad is that he never got punishment for any of these and he got away completely free even though he was alive up to 1979, which is obviously way after the war and the Nazis. And because he did a lot of bad stuff to kids, that's the reason I put this guy at number one. So, you made it to the end of the video, and that means you guys don't get scared easily. Well, if that's the case, then you should definitely click here to watch Wacky Wednesday's video on the 10 creepiest vintage medical practices ever. And click here to subscribe to me and Wacky Wednesday.